All right, guys, I did the unboxing and my first impression on this guy, this watch, but we're going to talk more specifically because it's, I don't know, it's kind of a hate it or love it type thing. It seems uh, from what I've been reading both on different forums and uh, certainly in the comments, but uh, I think one of the main issues right here is this guy right here, this $1,000 price tag. Uh, so people are me included, are kind of like, why? Why is it $1,000? Why is it not $500? The gold one, the chrome one, and uh, many others are, you know, 500 or less. And they have, you know, great finishes on them and everything. Now, I think the process on this one's probably a little more involved. I don't know a ton about it, um, but I'm sure there's just more going on there. Is it easy? I don't know. I guess I don't really care. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how it works. I think it looks cool. Um, and that's going to be, a, again, that's going to be a uh, an opinion-based thing, whether you like it or not. So I actually really do like the, the patina look or whatever you want to call it. Um, man, I don't know what you'd really call it, I guess. Worn or patina, but it's, it's done in a level that is so consistent with what you would actually probably find if you were to uh, wear a watch, I mean, it's more consistent across the surface than maybe what you would have realistically. You'd have a more focused wear items, wear spots. But overall, I think they captured the, the look that they were going for. So you can see it, and it's really smooth. It's, it's very nice. It's, there's no like, you don't feel the bumps or ridges or anything like that, so. And I know some people were complaining even about the negative display. When you're doing this model, like you have to, it has to be the negative display, guys. Um, and with these new screens, the negative display is easy to read. Low light, direct sunlight, everything. I'm having no issues with it, and I'm in my mid-40s. So uh, it, I think it's not really a valid complaint. And I still, this is my, my favorite G-Shock Square right now is the uh, gold bling master and I'll, I'll stand by that even with new models coming out the blue one or, or this one i think the gold is just over the top awesome um, and this one is too um uh what, do you, what would you call it like fan based awesome so like if i'm out in the wild people are going to notice my gold watch right so it's a little like hey look at me a little flashy this one is so discreet it would be no different than say just wearing like a you know, a regular uh, G-Shock, you know, like it is not going to draw attention to itself at all. And it's because it's just all black. It just looks like an old, all worn, uh, all black watch. So nothing crazy or special there. Um, it has the same module as the Chrome and the Black. So, I mean, there's tons of videos out there. It has the 3459. It does connect Bluetooth. There's a bunch of different options on that. So there's uh, videos just for that. So I'm not really showing that on this. One of the reasons I could say, if you are a G-Shock Square fan, or whatever, I guess, or if maybe you've had the G-Shock Squares in the past and you didn't like them because of the buttons, the oversized buttons on these are almost reason enough to get these ones, on top of the fact that the, the weight and heft of it and the wrist presence is just so much more uh, substantial. So it feels like a... I hate to say like real watch, but you guys know what I mean. It doesn't feel like a plastic watch. So you can see there on my 7.25, seven and a quarter inch wrist, it wears great. It feels great. Obviously I've spent a lot of wrist time with the uh, gold one there and I could see doing it with this one, but for me with the watches that I have, I really don't think I'm going to keep this one. Um, you know, the, and when you find these, you are going to pay $1,000 minimum. So I see there are some listed still at $1,000, but pretty much all the ADs from what I can tell have sold out. So there's, there's some on eBay and stuff, and there is a couple sellers, I think around the $1,000, $1,200, and that's as of, you know, today, July 14th, 2019. But I also see some trending, you know, $1,300, $1,400, $1,700. So, um... So that brings on a whole nother discussion. Uh, if 
if they could potentially justify the price of $1,000, there should be some literature or some extra things that come with this other than the premium box to explain the finishing if that is the reason why it's more. Or what I truly think it is, is it's actually a limited production. I don't know the number, they didn't number them, which I think was, again was a huge mistake. It should be numbered. And they could have even numbered it right on the front. That would have been pretty cool. Um, or somewhere, somehow, some sort of authenticity that it is whatever number of whatever they made. And I'm hearing conflicting reports on that even, uh, depending on which region of the world you're at. Um, you know, somewhere around 300 I've even heard, which I got to believe there's more than 300 of these. If there truly is, if anybody can confirm, if there truly is only like 300 of these, yeah, I'm totally keeping it. There's no way I'm getting rid of it. And that's, I guess that's my point. Like, yes, I paid $1,000 for it, and I'm thinking about selling it because I really don't know. There's too much mystery around it, and it's not something that I find myself grabbing out of the watch box to wear a ton. As cool as it is, um, I personally just like the gold one more, and I hate to be a negative Nancy on this, but because it is an awesome watch, but if it would have been, you know, the five or $600 range... I wouldn't even be squabbling over it. I would just keep it. And maybe they will do that eventually. I don't know. So, But uh, let me know what you guys think. I suspect a lot of people are going to be feeling the same way I am. But there's also a ton of people out there that $1,000 is not a lot of money to them. Um, and those people have the benefit of, you know, having a bunch of these watches laying around. And it's not a big deal. Or they're like a full-blown, true G-Shock collector. Um, and that's their main hobby. Uh, you guys can see I'm slowly adding things in here with even my um, toys in the background because I'm a G-Shock fan, guys. Uh, probably, not probably, I think I'm a bigger G-Shock fan than I am even a Seiko fan. And I, and I and you guys know I'm a big Seiko fan as well. So, um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, I guess. Keep it clean, though, in the comments, please. Otherwise, I'll just delete you. But um, definitely articulate however you uh, feel about this watch in the comments, whether it's a good or bad, or if you have information regarding uh, the numbers produced of these models. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I did purchase this from John over at Watch Gauge. Super fast shipping, awesome um, shop to deal with, and uh, he seems to get a lot of uh, cool G-Shocks in, uh, some limited ones. I have this one in now, too. Um, that's a little sneak peek for you. But the MTG line is killer so um that's actually a whole nother topic if you've watched this long i guess i'll kind of share with you in my opinion because i've already had a bunch of squares if i'm going to spend a thousand dollars i can spend a little bit less this is this guy over here is only 900 this is um i don't want to say it's more watch but it's i already have like the gold one so i feel like this one's competing with that one i would do this and uh this is a killer watch so i'll do a full video on this real soon so big thanks uh, for everybody watching the vid and uh, see you in the next one.